session for this afternoon. Um, we have Annick Brousseau, um, a research associate at L'Ecole Polytechnique de Montreal. Uh, he works in performance analysis tool for Linux, a re uh, sorry, a Linux at Distributed Open Reliable Systems Analysis Lab, Dorsal, and is um, going to talk today on leeting which um, is going to be an advanced Linux tracing for everyone. Could you please give a very warm welcome to Annick Russell. Thank you. Just for a start, I just want to know who I'm talking, talking to. Just by a show of hands, is, uh, has anybody have heard about LTTNG before? A couple of people. Uh, who has used any kind of tracing tool? F-trace, perf, D-trace? So most of people, is there anybody who uh, but know about nothing about tracing uh, around here? No? Okay, so I'll go faster in the first slides. So uh, as I said, I was working on LTTNG with a bunch, a bunch of people, mostly from Montreal, where it's currently nice uh, weather and with a lot of snow. So uh, enjoying here with the sun with you here. So first problem. This is one uh, presentation that one of my colleagues uh, did a couple of uh, months ago. He did a special view, a CPU usage view, and compare like Firefox, Chrome, rendering the same YouTube video at the same time, and have a quick look at what's happening there. So we see a little bit, a lot of XORG uh, CPU usage over there, and what we found out is like Firefox was doing quite well, doing a little bit of CPU usage, but at some point Chrome was like eating most of the CPU. By loading the tracing tool, this is the Eclipse view, look at all the kernel event that was there, you've seen that it was doing about every micro, couple of microseconds. Chrome was doing a clock get time uh, to, uh, we don't know why, but uh, it was filling the trace with all these events. This clock get time is a syscall event, and that we're eating up a lot of CPU time on that. So I don't know what's exactly the problem with the, not a Chrome developer, so, but just to show you a little bit of what can tracing do for you, uh, can pinpoint some, something, some kind of, uh, what kind of program your application are doing one on your system. So, I always get that quickly, but just to have just a quick review of we, if we talk a little bit of the same thing when, you talk, when we speak about tracing. So, most people, uh, we see tracing a little bit of lagging, but it's more level, uh, at a more lower level. And it's something that we use at a much higher frequency. As I've seen the event before, we can see event each microsecond and every hundred of nanoseconds. So you don't want to fill up like with text logs, uh, something that is going that fast. So it's a way to see a little bit at specific point inside our system. So uh, there's a specific trace points in the kernel. Uh, they can be static or dynamic. Uh, so the dynamic, dynamic trace points are really slower because you need to install them every time, you need to add some uh, special management, and where static trace points are really fast, uh, fast call that can get your data uh, that you want out of the way quickly. Now each trace point will have, will it go high speed, have a low latency, we usually get a timestamp, and we'll get some payload, some data you want to get uh, out of your system. There's three main usage for using tracing. First thing, for like university people, students, learning about your system. It's a really good way to have an understanding of what your system is doing, what the skills are doing. We all always learn about theoretical scheduling in our operating system courses, but when you get to an actual Linux system, it's a little bit more complex than, than that, so that's a probably good way to uh, understand what's there. I think most people are here to this part, the debugging part, we want to know we have some problem and we want to see what, uh, what are they found. The third usage that we commonly see is like event history. Uh, we have some partners that really want to just use tracing to just keep recording all the time what's happening in the system and when they hit a bug, when there's some exception, some error that happened, they want to look, okay, I'll save whatever there is in my trace buffer, so that this can do like offline analysis later. So tracing is really interesting for that because it doesn't have a big impact on your system wherever if you log everything uh, on the text files, it can get uh, quite TV. Uh, so with tracing, you can get most data really quickly. So LTT, LTT in all of that, 
there's a couple of tracing tools uh, out in the market. So why we would like to add one? Uh, LTT has a quite long history. First started as LTT in 99. Uh, got a big upgrade in uh, 2005 with uh, the first version of LTTNG, LTT Linux Trace Toolkit Next Generation. Uh, by around that time, uh, we've seen the uh, D-Trace and System Tap appears, and a little bit later, F-Trace and Perf that are in the Linux kernel um, there. Last year, we released a new complete different version of LTTNG. We call it 2.0. We kind of skipped completely the one version because it was so different and so awesome that we always directly go to the <laughs> two number. And a couple of weeks ago, we released the 2.1 version. So LTTNG, and what the friends, it's a, it's a system that includes a kernel tracer and a user space tracer. Uh, the user space tracer is completely standalone from the kernel, doesn't need to the kernel where a system that also does both, but rely on some kernel uh, instrumentation to uh, do its uh, user space magic. What do we have, what do we do differently with the LTTNG? First thing, it's, we started to aim like, when we talk about tracing, it's a tool for kernel developer, and we're looking at like what does the F trace if in Perf was doing a really good job for kernel developer to uh, get the information out. We take a little bit of a step back and see what we can do differently, where our tool can be uh, used. So we look at, yeah, we'll do a tool for most of us, most of everybody. Well, not maybe all these people, but like everybody in the room, every software developer uh, can be used. Still can be a useful tool for kernel development. But we like to provide tools that are useful for any user space developer, sysadmin, who want to really pinpoint their problem uh, on their system. So the first thing we do is to get to an easy installation. Uh, beforehand, we needed some kernel patches into the, uh, to install the kernel. Now we all remove the necessity on the kernel patches. You still need, it's only a couple of kernel modules. We support 2.6.38 up to the latest kernel. If you need like to run on like Red Hat 6 system with to run a 2.6.32, you need a couple of small patches to apply to your kernel and uh, to make it running. We have a RPM package also for this uh, already apply. If you need user space tracing and just need to want to trace your application, forget about kernel module, how to all run on user space, you can install it directly on your system. We are in Amos every distribution, Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora. Fedora don't have the kernel module because of the policy of the distribution, but you can install it quite easily. Arch, Suzy, still pending on the Red Hat side, but should be in the next release of it. We support about every hardware out there, x86, ARM, PowerPC, Spark, MIPS. We are doing the port to the Tyler architecture if anybody is using that. And we are starting to do work on the, the new Xion fee. Uh, the many core uh, architecture, because one of the goal of our lab is to like develop tools for like a lot of uh, core system. We do some work with 64 core computers, so we really are to have some system that scale really well at a high number of core. Uh, we did some port from other OS and Android, put it in the other OS category. Still, it's ongoing. Uh, if anybody want to help on that, uh, we are really. Uh, welcome any help. That side quite uh, interesting to plug additional module and additional daemon there. We did a port of UST on FreeBSD. It's uh, out there. It's supporting the main line, and we did a prototype of a Segwin port. Uh, we had a partner who wanted absolutely to do a demo on the Windows, so we did that. Really painful, so we won't do it again. <laughs> the other thing we did before, if anybody has used LTTNG. The zero things version was like UST has some specific command line, the uh, kernel was another command line, all different commands. So we did like rework all of that. Uh, we did like one simple command, LTTNG, do whatever you want. Uh, we also have binding uh, in C and Python. So if you want to actually do a control thing and a special uh, surveillance application, you can do the control the tracing uh, directly. So this is the standard command you'll use to do some tracing, create a session. Enable some events, start, stop, you can view the trace, and you can clean it up after that. One neat thing we did for, mostly like for sysadmin, uh, and maybe other usage, but uh, that was the, uh, the, the main uh, focus group, 
you, we had the possibility for tracing the kernel by known root user. So if you are a part of a special group, the tracing group, you can actually access the kernel tracer that way. We also have support multiple session in parallel. What that means, you can create a session, activate a couple of trace points, do some tracing. You can activate yourself another session, activate other trace point, another user in your system that also has access to the tracing group, create another session, activate another completely another set of trace point, and all these uh, sessions won't interact with each other. So you won't, uh, if you activate some trace point, you won't act, uh, activate it on the session of the other. So we can debug your specific things, other guys can debug his specific things, and you will get uh, each the only data you want on your system. How do we do that? A bit uh, intro in our small, simple architecture. <laughs> the main thing here in the middle, we have a session daemon that runs on the system you need to trace. That's where the, all the control magic is happening. This thing is interfacing with all the tracer. We have a module for the kernel tracer and each of your application that has a probe in them that you have in them at compile time. Uh, when you start a session, uh, all the application and daemon spawn, the session daemon spawn the consumer. Consumer, his role is to actually get the data from the trace buffer to disk or to the network. Uh, we have a feature if you like to develop doing the embedded development and don't have any hard disk there, you can just stream uh, the trace network really fast to the supply system call. So you should be as fast as the, on the uh, hard disk. So that goes to different storage. And you can, after that, use uh, any amount of any viewer you like that support the, our CTF, the common trace format, uh, for that. And you can control it with, as you said, with your own API or with the official command line tool. There's a lot of data, well, a lot of kind of data you can use with uh, LTNG. I, I speak about the static trace point in the kernel. There's currently about 500 trace point available to, uh, for tracing tools. Uh, it's all there for any tracing tool, Perth, F trace, system tap, can all use them. Uh, LTTNG support about a little bit more than, uh, I say, two thirds of them, because we need to do uh, some specific uh, adaptation for them. Uh, there's things like scheduling, uh, file system, block IO, network, and I forgot a lot of them. Uh, via virtualization, also a lot of them. Uh, so. We can trace all the syscalls, so we can have, have an entry for every syscall. So if you're used to using strace to get some syscall information, uh, you can use LTTNG to get the same information out of your system, and I'll show you uh, soon that you'll get way better performance. We support Kprobe in the function tracer. Uh, this is the dynamic instrumentation uh, capability of the kernel, so we can like just say, I want to trace this address, I want to trace this function. Uh, so you will see if you have a specific part of the kernel uh, that you want to, to use, is there. We have a thing which is the context, so to every event, we can have what we call a context, which is like other information that you will get, like PID information, what's the current PID running. Uh, you can have all the performance counter, uh, cache misses, uh, and uh, stuff like that, uh, program counter. Uh, cycle counter, etc., uh, that you can get there. So, if you want to have a, an idea, like on every event, but you want to quickly see what was the PID running when I hit the system call or when I get this event, you can add that quickly by the context. What we also do in our analysis tools is if we recreate a state system that rebuild the complete state of the kernel at any point in time. But if you want to do something quick, the context can give you the information. On the user space side, a little bit less there, but we have a static trace point with filtering, which, uh, so we can have, add your trace point in your application, and when you control the, the, uh, the tracing, you can say, I just want to trace when this value is X, or like uh, we have some, uh, some uh, font company that work with us, like I just want to trace one, this specific font call number. So when trigger its phone, this phone number, it will actually start the tracing and uh, get some data. You can also add some context to the, uh, the information there, like PID and stuff like that. It's all produced CTF data. It's a standard that was defined by the Multicore Association. Uh, it's goal to have the same format as uh, other hardware-based uh, tracing tools. So you can get 
the same information and the same tool to view all this uh, form of data. For those of you who haven't have a look at what's a trace point, that's a kernel trace point. It's the SCAD process fork trace point. So every time you fork on the kernel, this trace point get called, uh, gets called if it's activated. So when you define trace point, if you ever want to add another one to some specific part of the kernel, uh, all you have to do is write a small structure like that. What you have there is the prototype of the function. So you see what's the, parent, uh, the parameter that will get called to this trace point. Uh, what's the argument, the actual value. That's what will get written to the trace buffer. So you see that we'll write parent com, parent PID, child com, and child PID uh, on the uh, trace file. A couple of uh, other stuff like just for like to assign, uh, uh, the, the, you need to specify to the, to the trace point how you will copy data actually to the buffer. And in the end, it's, it's mostly used by, uh, I think, F-Trace, I don't know if Perf use it, but it's how to convert uh, your trace data to uh, a text string. On the UST side, we did exactly the same thing. Uh, quite similar, just we add like a different, uh, a little bit different syntax. We have like a component domain, uh, so we can classify your trace point easily by application. Uh, and we uh, strongly suggest to people to like, if you have like your company name, a little bit like com dot company name dot something, so don't clash with like org Apache HTTP. So we uh, don't clash with other trace points with the application. And same thing, the fields. Uh, what's the type, what's the name of the, term, the parameter, and how do we store it in uh, the trace file. To use it in your application, when you have defined it, simply call, uh, you just need to do this call with trace point, what's the name and what's your parameter in there. I was saying that tracing is quite fast. If, uh, this is the small comparison, so we did just, uh, I did a find on like 100,000 file, uh, on my system, takes about half a second there. If I do it with by running LTT engine, getting all the system call information, and all the event on the kernel, add about a second to it for the whole traces. If you do the same thing with running S trace, it goes to about 40 seconds. So it's quite a useful tool. If you want to actually have a less impact on your system to actually get real time information uh, and actually do some work, because it can get quite uh, heavy to do, uh, it's a good thing to use. We have a tool called LTT and GTOP that I'll demo uh, shortly after that. So with a comparison of all the, what's the total CPU time of uh, running top for a specific period of time versus running LTT and GTOP at the same time. So we have a list and pack in the system and the interesting information is the number of syscalls that top is doing to get your information. So about uh, 250,000 uh, and here on the LTT and G is doing a lot less is called. What we do, like top just like read proc file system every time you open all the files they also open, read, close. Here we just like open the trace buffer, just stream the information there and close it at the end. So it's quite easy. And again, a less impact on the system. We did a little bit of comparison of the with the competition with the D-Trace and system tap on the user space side. Uh, system tap is quite better. I think the, this year, this one was taking about a little bit over than uh, a year ago. So system tap got better during that period of time. But still, uh, UST that's a nanosecond. So when you trace an event, that's the impact of one. So quite small, and on the big order of thing, uh, between 250 and 500 uh, nanosecond. That's for one thread. When it gets interesting, if you need to scale your application to more threads or more cores. We get in the cost and time on the USD side. We don't add more time if you're tracing six core, one core, 64 core. It's almost a constant linear time per core you add. Where the trace and system tap, uh, it's not as the, the, the way they do before is not uh, as efficient for that. So it's get quite easy. System tap doesn't have the same goal as LTTNG, where LTTNG really get, get, it really get to, wants to get all the data out on the system and you actually do the analysis after the fact, where system tap is really more geared to uh, doing some script that will do the analysis online and actually just good, give you aggregated data at the end of your uh, session. 
So how do you look at the data? Because you can get some quite a lot of data for about like one minute of tracing, it can get easily in the gig. Uh, so we have a lot of tools. First of thing, a bubble trace, simply trace trace file to text converter or to other format converter. So you, you can see you have all the basic information. Timestamp, nanosecond precision, time difference between event and event name, then CPU number on which was running, and uh, all the data you have for uh, this syscall. And a little bit of uh, context information on this one, like which was the actual program running. So that's a basic tool we have. Uh, if you want to do something quick, uh, look at some data, uh, you can grab it, you can pass it. We have some nice script that does octing and you can print it, the information you want to extract quickly. Quite TV, but can get some information fast. I've mentioned the TNG top. That's an anchors program that, that, that aims to give you like uh, a big overview of the information on your system, all the statistics, uh, performance information and uh, all of that uh, quickly on the command line so it can easily be used like remotely through SSH if you need to uh, debug some server out there. LTTV, which uh, is my role to maintain. Uh, simple C program, uh, GTK, to view a trace quickly. I have the general component that we see in our trace viewer like a control flow view, flow view where we see the state of each program and uh, like Trestle's view, like CPU or RQ, when they are using and all the, the different trace data. Currently not available for LTTNG 2.0, still trying to have it uh, convert to the uh, new CTF format. Uh, quite an old program to support, so it been, it's been in development for the last 10 years, so a bit of a reward to do, but should be available uh, quite soon. The main tool, I don't know if you, any of you use Eclipse, but uh, if you do, well, you will be happy. If you, you are not, you will be less happy. But uh, I mean, not an Eclipse user group. Uh, so uh, that's why I work on LTTV. Uh, but it's quite a nice tool, really well integrated into your development environment. And uh, it's really geared to have a more advanced analysis uh, integrated inside it. Right now, we have mostly have the same control for view, resource view, a lot of statistics. You can do even some control, remote control of your tracing directly to the Eclipse interface. What can be useful to do? Uh, do the small script, the small tangent graph that use the Babel Trace API to actually do, extract some data information. Uh, Babel Trace has some Python binding, some C binding. So we can just, if you want to just do a quick graph of the, have an histogram of the event on the system to like to, to pinpoint when. Uh, there was some problem. Uh, we did also, uh, one of the students in our lab did some uh, compression to actually replace the uh, system information, that's huge CPU information, actually use tracing to get this data. So it has less an impact on the system. So that's the main tool. There are also a couple of commercial tools available. Uh, I know Mentor have some, I think Freescale support it also. So you can actually, they are mostly used at Clips and rebrand re it, but uh, uh, it's still a nice tool to have. So that's the current status where we are going uh, in the, the next months. That's what we really will add. Live tracing. Uh, right now, when you, if you want to do analysis, you need to like take the trace, stop it, and uh, do your analysis. Uh, what we are currently adding, it should be in the next version in a month or two. It's live tracing and it will be integrated into LTT and GTOP, so we can actually like, just like Start your analysis tool, look at what's happening in the system, and get the actual uh, information uh, while you're tracing. Uh, the thing we had the per user global buffer, it's uh, mostly like an optimization on the UST usage. We have a less an impact on the memory usage because right now you need to have like buffer for every application that uses UST. So if you have a lot of UST uh, uh, supported application, that can be, uh, use a lot of buffer. So we are adding this feature. Remote tracing, uh, that's actually there, in fact, uh, it's still there for an older presentation. So to like trace on one system, send the data to another one. Filtering on the kernel side should be added uh, soon, now it's only on the user, user space side. Uh, currently working on uprobe support, I don't know if you heard about like it's added in the 3.5 kernel 
to have like really user space dynamic tracing where you can just specify any address on any uh, executable you have on your system and have some tracing tool happening. Uh, so we'll add that in the probably next version. And we also want to add some binding to the language. Uh, a lot of people are asking for Java binding for the tracing to have a better integration to the JVM. So we can just like have your Java application have some call and, that, and instead of calling a GNI to get to the UST library, we'll do and lead naturally in uh, Java. I work in a research lab, so we do a lot of things for the more future time, but like dependence analysis should be there in about less than a year. Uh, that's really nice tool that once we get out there, I'm not yet available, that, but uh, that will easy, really ease uh, the use of uh, this tool and get, will give you the information more quickly on your problem. Dependence analysis is a tool that will show you the path of where, what, what is really blocking your application. If you have a, uh, a web browser that do a request to a, a web server on, on your network and you trace all of the system in between, it will actually be able to tell you like, okay, this far browser did wait on some socket request, but actually this other uh, system, this other server, this, this server was waiting on some block IU or some network IU from a third server uh, that was blocking some this there. So we'll, uh, we will actually be able to see uh, the path of that. We actually have some uh, demo of that uh, on the lab. Uh, if you go to the website, we have some presentation on that. Uh, multi-level event abstraction, well, like I'll show you too, that's quite complicated to see events, but like to show like, this is a file reading instead of like file open, read, close. We'll have like higher level event added to the tool so we can actually like see, okay, this is the general view and after I can go deeper in my system to see the actual syscall. Uh, time synchronization, uh, if you like trace, trace your whole cluster uh, or cloud. Uh, you uh, you might have some time difference between all your nodes, and tra since tracing is really precise, even clock, you know, we to synchronize all of that. So we already had that in some older version, but we need to uh, add that with the new trace points and all of that. And we're also working on using like the uh, ARM. Uh, I don't remember the name, but there's some hardware tracing component there, so to uh, core site uh, and get in this information directly into LTTNG into CTF format, so we can see actually in the same. Uh, trace and I mentioned the cloud just because it's popular <laughs> and it actually gets us a bit of grant money so <laughs> so I'll do a couple of quick uh, demo uh, on the system which I'll just play some demo so that's just uh, to show you the use of the command line uh, I go so when you do you need to create a session you can name it as ever as you want to different them there's a uh, automatic one you enable some event now I enable every kernel event every user space event you start your session you start your your program you want to trace here's a sample is a small program we have to do example to that has some user space trace point you can do whatever load you put in your system and you will actually see it on your trace and when you're finished you just stop the tracing and you can actually view the trace. <coughs> so there's a neat, uh, just an example of like, this is what we do, like we have a trace point in the loop called micro uh, every on every loop time. So we'll see what, uh, what's the impact on the trace it has. So on the trace, you can see all the system calls, the scheduling events, so you can see easily that the prime was switched on and there. Um, so if you look to, the, I will, will find just less fine to find my first uh, user space trace point. Take some time because it's quite a big file, but we see here like it, the, the program was running on CPU tree. This is my message. This is the PID of the, my program. This is the timestamps. It's really useful like to find your user space event and to pinpoint it into the whole trace with the, the timestamp and to get it to uh, the other tools. So. What we see here is that your, if you look at the CPU tree, you see the syscall nano sleep that was caused for the micro sleep, and you see after that on the same CPU tree that called the HR timer in it and uh, all the impact on the kernel uh, after that. <coughs> so that was for using the command line. 
You can have a look at the couple of comments on the list that can show you like detailed information about your session, which risk point where is activated, uh, what's the parent boot. You can switch like the size of the buffers and uh, all of that. Uh, so you can get, uh, you can add more buffer, uh, reduce the number of buffer, depending on what's your load on your application, uh, what you need to, if you want to have a lot of trace point, less trace point, less memory impact. Uh, and you see like there's like the M map, depending on what kind of uh, output you can do uh, of uh, what you can see if you do live tracing and all of that, you will see that into the list command. And when you finish, you can destroy your session and it's gone, you will need to start again. I'll go first to help it finish up. This is a, a trace I've took before. Uh, I just like start tracing, go to Firefox, open a, start like a video uh, on YouTube and you just see a little bit of what's happening on the LTTNG top side. So it's quite similar to top. Uh, you have like every process, PID, every thread ID, and their CPU usage. As you can see by default it goes uh, over in time on every increment every second. And in the top you see like the timestamp and you see like how many threads were created and uh, destroyed and how many uh, files were open and closed. Actual IO usage of file, I say file, but it's file descriptor, so it can be either socket, network, or all that. Interesting is you can like go forward in time, go faster, and what you can go backward. So if you want to analyze the system, you're like start up and wow, what was two seconds before? I forgot. So with that, you can actually have the trace and you can go back uh, over there and uh, see different things. You can sort uh, the information uh, and uh, yeah, you can sort by PID, by time, uh, by name if you want. So here I sort by PID, so I can really find if I'm looking for one specific process that was causing some problem. Let's we'll have a look at Firefox. So we see the PID and all its thread over there and you can see the CPU usage of all of these and we see that it was just the main thread that was uh, doing some CPU and we can actually uh, add, uh, hide, sorry, hide the threads. So you can just show the main process and don't show the different thread. Uh, other than that, you have a couple of other views uh, that you can see. Uh, the performance top, which will actually see you get you the performance counter. Uh, when I, I did some, added some context, so you can see the branch load miss, the major fault, the cache misses on all the program, you can sort them, so you see that like, yeah, Firefox is doing some lot of stuff, doing a lot of cache misses. And you have an I.O. version, so you can see which program does the most I.O. on your system uh, quickly, and sort them also uh, that way. The other thing is that you can go directly into the data of one process, and there you can see what's this current CPU usage, uh, what are the files open for this program, uh, how many out of each socket, how many I.O. each socket is producing, uh, you can browse to them, you can go forward in time, backward in time for each uh, process or thread uh, on, the, on the system. Top is dead. <laughs> 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 so that was uh, the Tinge Top. If I just go quickly to Eclipse to have a quick look. So that's not the same trace because there's a bug in Eclipse that don't like like the context that need are necessary are necessary for your uh, ng top. But similar trace, I do the same thing. Like start a video around here, you see like the density of event are really higher that way. So we can like pinpoint okay, there's probably something going on there. You can go there. Uh, you can filter by event type if you want like to see just some specific events, like you want to see all the exec where each program can start if you're looking for one uh, specific program. And uh, yeah, it's going to search all of that. And uh, can go, you have all the same information as you had like the argument of that. You can go back, you can zoom on any specific part of your trace. And you'll see that the program will move the control for you will move to how this you can synchronize you. So if you can find the information, one specifically, you can like just select a part of it and have the statistics for just this part and uh, find where the problem was, hopefully.
So when you are pinpoint a nice area, you can go to the uh, control flow view that should like each each pro each uh, process which all the state here we see in yellow is like just waiting uh, and in green is uh, like a mix of event. Blue is like green is running actually on the CPU and the blue is running in the system call. We have like if you have a pop up you have the CPU number and uh, so you can go there was nothing a lot of happening over there but you can so it's a lot of processing a lot of waiting you can see here like running, syscall, running, syscall, so it was like reading some files or some socket and uh, other stuff. Here you see so it was actually waiting for CPU. So now you see that, okay, there was no CPU available at this time. Is there any problem with the system uh, for that? And uh, actually, uh, one interesting to see is like if you will show the CPU number, so you see that your process is transiting from one CPU to another. So that can be useful if you want to have some cache locality uh, to debug like, okay, is my application just like hopping around between CPU or staying on the same all the same time? Uh, can be useful if you have some specific performance uh, to do. So you can learn that there's a resource view with all the uh, CPU and what actually each CPU is doing which a process is running in the HPU and some statistics. So that was the most interesting part of that. So I will be open to any question. So if you have any question on the project, if you need to contact me, information is there. All right, thank you very much, Anik. <laughs> very good, huh? I suspect we may have a question or two. Yes, one right at the back there. The interactive stuff you were doing there, uh, if you're not an Eclipse user, is there an equivalent outside of Eclipse? Yeah, there's a LTTV, which is should be available in a couple of weeks. Uh, but does about the same thing in the most simple environment uh, because yeah we are aware that not uh, every person wants to start a clip on their system or can on 12 inch screen quite uh, not fun to do so yeah so I'm running on 2632 if I want to just trace user space I can do that yes you can do that there's no problem the limitation is only I think we need at least 2616 for some of the component but for uh, you have no problem for user space tracing. Uh, so you're talking about the option of underprivileged users tracing via being in a tracing group. Yeah. And I'm just wondering what provisions you've got to prevent um, those underprivileged users from tracing data that they might use to elevate their privileges further. For the the, the one in the tracing group. In the tracing group. Yeah. If you're in the tracing group, in fact, you're. As, as the privilege as root. You can trace everything. So you okay. will might have access to some unprivileged data, so you need to really be uh, specific on who you put on this tracing group because you can have access to any kernel event. So essentially you might as well get a person pseudo to root. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Just a simpler way to manage it. But, uh, and that is for user space tracing as well, is it? Uh, yes, it's applied to user space tracing as well. As a user, you can trace all your applications. I know not, uh, not everyone, not the other one, but if you're part of the tracing group, you will be able to see the other users' applications. Um, I hate to be the one to ask this, but what do you think the chances are of LTT ever going upstream? <laughs> Sorry. I was expecting this one. Um, I think it will get there someday, uh, probably not this year. Uh, there was some discussion last uh, August at the Tracing Summit about maybe have some, uh, re uh, not some merging, but using something uh, between F-Trace and LTTNG. Uh, we, we really find that we discovered that perf has really different use case and it might have some it's more like uh, sampling than tracing so it, it might have a use case for two tracers in the kernel three might be a little bit more than one but what we're building is try to we want to build a user base and probably get there at some point but there's some there's some work we can do with the f trace people to uh, to merge that there uh. For system call tracing, the like, like a S-trace equivalent, uh, do you need the kernel support or? Yes, yes, you need the kernel support to trace uh, all so the. So that means it's not available for 2632. 
You need to patch the kernel. Yeah, you will need to patch. Yes. Yes. I don't know if we we might be able to do something just for a syscall, but I'm really not sure if we can do it. But that's something we might uh, we could look into. Maybe if we just like strike just the syscall, maybe we might book somewhere else and do it. If there is there if there's a demand for that, maybe it's something we can look into uh, into it. Any questions that are not in the top right of the auditorium? <laughs> Uh, how stable is the kernel module? Is it going to crash my production boxes? No, it's, it's really stable. We are really focusing at, we want to run, to have you run that on your production system and we have like partners that want that running that on production system. So we are really like uh, uh, strict on the, the stability that, of that. That's great. That's the first question they'll ask me next week. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, you talked about adding uh, trace events to Java. Are there other programming languages you're looking at adding trace events to, like Python? Uh, Python would be the uh, the other one that the person I would want to to look into. Uh, it's quite interesting. I don't know how we could uh, like maybe build something into the interpreter there to have some uh, nice trace event. I did some demo last year about like to do a small Python uh, component, and I did a trace of like uh, a trace. Uh, I did some trace in HTTPD. Uh, in MariaDB and in some Python CGI, and you can see all all that user space tracing even with the kernel tracing, all that. So it's right now you can do it easily with like the C bindings, but it would be interesting. And we have a lot of the demand for Java, but Python would be a kind of a next step uh, over the year. If there's some people who want to work on that, we are really a welcoming contribution. Okay, I don't see any more hands, so can we please put our hands together for Anna Kulishov? Merci beaucoup, and Kirby Ends, and that's from the Linux conference.